Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation, which is an equation with integer solutions. We have m squared minus 16 n squared equals 17. And we're going to be looking for integer values of m and n. So first of all, notice that these equations are somewhat similar to what is called Pell's equations, but they are not Pell's equations because 16 is a perfect square or contains a perfect square. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We have m squared, which is a perfect square, and 16 n squared, which is another perfect square. So we have a difference of two squares, which is factorable. So we're going to go ahead and factor this as difference of two squares. And if you remember, the difference of two squares formula is given by a squared minus b squared equals a plus b multiplied by a minus b. So we can go ahead and write this as follows, m plus 4n, because 4n times 4n is 16n squared, multiply by m minus 4n equals 17. Now, if m and n are real numbers, then there are infinitely many solutions, obviously, and we can solve, you know, for m in terms of n and vice versa. And by replacing m and n with certain values, you know, whatever values you want, then you can get infinitely many solutions. For example, if uh, n is equal to 0, m can be square root of 17 or uh, plus minus square root of 17. So, but we're looking for integer solutions, so that's why we have a finite number of solutions. And here's how it goes. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we use factoring uh, while solving Diophantine equations. If something is factorable, it's good. Sometimes we, we can't factor, but we can use modular arithmetic. Uh, I also made a video on Diophantine equations. You can go ahead and take a look at it. Just check it out. Anyways, so 17 is a prime number, which is good, because prime numbers can only be factored in a certain way, which is uh, 1 times 17. So here's what it means. We have two factors, and that equals 17, and m and n are integers. So if m and n are integers, they're uh, m plus 4n, is an integer, m minus 4n is also an integer. So can you find two, two integers whose product is 17? And the answer would be 17 times 1, 1 times 17, negative 17 times negative 1, and negative 1 times negative 17. So that gives us four cases. Since we didn't restrict uh, our solutions to positive integers or certain integers, then we're going to be looking all, at all the cases. So let's go ahead and take a look at each case. First one says m plus 4n equals 17 and m minus 4n equals 1. So when we go ahead and add these two equations up, 4n cancels out, we get 2m equals 18, which implies m equals 9. Since m is equal to 9, we can go ahead and plug it in. 9 plus 4n is 17. That means 4n equals 8 or n equals 2. So in other words, 9 comma 2 is a solution. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing for all of these pairs. m plus 4n is 1 and m minus 4n is 17. Now what's going to happen is m value is not going to change. When you add these up and divide by 2, you're going to get the same thing. 2m equals 18 and m equals 9. Great. When you plug in m equals 9, though, you're going to get something slightly different because it's going to be like... 9 plus 4n equals 1, which means 4n equals negative 8, and that implies n equals negative 2. So in the first case, n was a positive 2, now it is a negative 2. So 9 comma plus minus 2 works. And then we're going to be looking at the third and fourth cases where the numbers are negative. So if we start off with the first one, n plus 4n is negative 17, and m minus 4n is negative 1. Again, by adding these up, we get 2m equals negative 18 and m equals negative 9. And let's see what happens if we replace m with negative 9 in the first or second equation. doesn't matter, but I like the first one better. Negative 9 plus 4n is negative 17. When you add, negative, when you add positive 9 to both sides, you get 4n equals negative 8. That implies n equals negative 2. So we kind of stuck with 2 here. Uh, plus minus 2 when m is plus minus 9 so far. So the fourth solution shouldn't be hard to guess. We're going to get m plus 4n is negative 1, and m minus 4n is negative 17. 
By adding these again, we get 2m equals negative 18, which implies m equals negative 9. Okay, great. So m equals negative 9, what about the n value? Again, plug it in. You're going to get negative 9 plus 4n equals negative 1. And this time, by adding 9 to both sides, you're going to get 4n equals positive 8 and n equals 2. Great. So here's how this works. m can be plus minus 9, n can be plus minus 2, and that's going to basically give us through four cases. So we can kind of write the mn values as 9 comma 2 or ne 9 comma negative 2. And then we have the negative 9 comma negative 2 and negative 9 comma positive 2. Obviously you could also write it as plus minus 9 comma plus minus 2, but you have to be careful which one goes with which, but in this case it's basically everything. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.